All right, so here we are, Coffee Cafe week three. Okay, we just finished up our transaction for the coffees, right? Our in-store sales on the 18th. So now that we finished that day, it is now Wednesday, June 19th. And let's see what we have here, right? First thing that we have here is we're delivering to Katie's Coffee Corner. Okay, so here's everything you need to know about Katie's Coffee Corner. Okay. All right, so let's see here. What happened here? What happened here? We delivered to Katie's Coffee Corner. Right? Albert did his job and delivered to Katie's Coffee Corner. Payment. Okay, we got a payment. Mm -hmm. What kind of payment? Did, we did not get cash. We made a sale. We made a sale. Okay. You said we made a pay we had a payment. Okay, but what kind of payment? It's not cash. Checking. Checking. What else? We gave her terms, okay. You don't know, no, you're right. We gave her terms, so therefore accounts receivable. She owes us money. And we gave her terms. Right? What are her terms? Yeah, fifty percent. But when is the when is the bill due? In five days. In five days. Okay. Someone said we made a sale. What kind of sale? What did we sell? Should be the sales for the regular coffee, the supreme, and then the mug. Good. Excellent. So, we need to recognize every single sale. So, we have sales, regular coffee. We have sales. For the Supreme Coffee. And we have sales for the ceramic coffee mugs. Okay. What are my account numbers? Okay. What about my sales? Okay. 
Ouais. What account is number is for my sales regular coffee? Okay, Supreme Coffee. Okay. And your ceramic coffee mug should be forty one fifty. Okay. Anything else? Cost of goods, not yet. We need to we need to sell our stuff first before we can take it out of our inventory. There's no discount here. Delivery charges. Delivery charges. So let's take a look at our chart of accounts is there anything that is in remote to anything with delivery charges your delivery income delivery income for 48,000 okay good So let's plug in our numbers. First things first, how much did Katie give me? How much did she pay me? One oh nine fifty three. How much does she owe me? The one oh nine fifty three and the plus the one oh nine fifty two. Okay, so in this case she just owes me only one oh nine fifty two because she already paid me one oh nine fifty three. Her grand total that the invoice was amount was two hundred and nineteen. But she gave me half of the money up front. So now she just owes me the remaining of a hundred and nine and fifty two cents. Okay. How much did I sell the coffee for? The regular coffee. Forty nine thirty five and supreme. Thirty nine ninety. And how many coffee mugs? Yep, ninety nine point eight. And last but not least, how much did I charge her for delivery? Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. So rule of thumb, I'm going to ensure that my debits match my credits. So I have a total of two nineteen oh five on the left. 219.05 on the right. Therefore, no typos. Okay. Good. And last but not least, what can what do I need to do to finish off this description? Include your terms in the sale. Okay, good. So who do we sell to? Okay. What invoice did I bill her with? And what are her terms? Fifty percent COD net five. And did she pay me her fifty percent? 
yes, right? She paid me using her own check number 412. Okay, excellent. Now that we finished our journal, what's next? We gotta update our ledgers. Okay. So, first account we have here. Checking. the check that she gave us? Mm-hmm, okay. You could say receive payment. So you kind of make that difference between your check and their check. Okay, four, 12. Okay. We're on the seventh journal. So how much money did we receive? 109.53. So in this case, what is my total balance in my checking account? Fifteen twenty eight sixteen. Fifteen twenty eight sixteen. Excellent. Okay. We have our very first accounts receivable. Okay. In this case, an invoice number should be perfectly fine, right? Because you can look up that invoice number and tell me exactly who purchased and what they purchased. Okay, post reference. Still on seven. And how much does Katie owe me for this one? She owes me 109.52. Okay. All right, so next is sales. We need to go to our sales. Okay. And this time we have sales regular coffee and supreme coffee. So first couple accounts right here. How many pounds did you sell? We sold 15 pounds of regular coffee to Katie. Right, and you can put the invoice number on there. And how much was the total for those 15 pounds of regular coffee? Forty-nine thirty-five. 
Okay, good. And it's the very first one. So should be 49 and 35 cents. Okay. We also sold some Supreme Coffees. How many pounds did we sell? For how much? Thirty-nine ninety. Okay. And how many coffee mugs did we sell? We sold 20 of them. Okay. For how much? $99.80. So therefore, what is my grand total in this account for selling my ceramic coffee mugs? One forty one seventy four. Good. All right. And last but not least, we have to do delivery income. So we have interest income, delivery income right here. Six nineteen. We can put in the invoice number so we know that we sold to Katie. Okay. And we earned how much money from income, from delivery? $30. $30. Okay. Now, in this case, okay, we understand why we charge delivery charges because we're delivering these coffees to the clients. That, that's, that's what... Albert's job is to do is to take orders from these whole from these purchasers, right? And sell the coffee and deliver them. Okay. And he's gonna charge him $30 for the convenience of maybe travel, time, gas, whatever, right? So therefore, that's what he charges. He's gonna charge him $30 to deliver them. Now, in this case, why did I not charge tax? Say that again? It. I can't hear you. It's like code. What do you mean by code? Anybody else want to try to guess? Because you didn't use the service, you just you took it directly to them. Um not necessarily. Why does Katie get tax exempt? No, 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 this, uh, no, no, okay, I got it. No, this is not, obviously, is a coffee mug food? No. So, no. 
You're not charging because it's not food. Anybody else? Who are we? What are we to Katie? We're a vendor. We are a vendor. Good, excellent. Now, why is it that we're selling to Katie coffee by the pound instead of coffee by the cups? Right? We, what is Katie Coffee's Corner? It's another coffee shop, right? Why is a coffee shop selling to another coffee shop? Something to do with business to business. It's a business to business. So therefore, we are acting as if we are the supplier. And this coffee's corner is buying from us as a wholesaler. So in this case, right, because it's a business to business, we have the right to say, hey, we don't need to collect sales tax from you because you're going to be collecting sales tax from your customers anyway. So in this case, there it, this is the one of the occasions where a wholesaler to supplier situation where you have that kind of relationship, you can have the option to tax exempt. But remember, um, this is a tax thing that's going to be reported when you go to your IRS saying, you acted as a supplier, so you're not collecting the tax, but the person that you sold it to is going to collect the tax, okay? So that is one of the reasons why we tax exempt them, because it is a business to business. We are the wholesaler slash supplier, and we're supplying this mini char, um, coffee shop with supplies, okay? And we can send them off without tax exempting, I mean, without charging them tax, okay? So good. So no sales tax here, but because we are an in-source sales and we sell our coffee at the store, right? That's why we charge our sales tax. But in this case, nope, this person is just buying coffee from us by the pound as a as a person who needs us as a supplier. Okay. So now that we have this, right, we finished our journal, we finished our ledger. Okay, what should come next? We have two more things left for this transaction. Um, Albert, we want to start from the beginning. Okay, good. Excellent, right? We need to figure out Albert's commission because he made a sale so therefore we need to make sure that we properly calculate for him how much money he earned so in this case today's date is the 19 we invoiced coffee's katie's coffee corner for invoice number 101 and what is going to be 10 percent of 21905 Yep, two dollars. No, not two dollars. Ten percent. Twenty-one dollars and ninety-one cents is what Albert is going to earn from us. So in this case, the very left, the very right column here, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna tally up our totals as we go through, so we know for this particular one he earned. $21.91, okay? And then we're just going to keep adding and adding and adding till whenever the day payroll is due, we stop there and we determine how much we owe Albert. So in this case, right now we owe Albert $21.91. Okay. All right, now there's two more things after this. <laughs> Sorry. What else do we have to do?
we sold to a customer and this customer owes us. So let's go to our customers on our subsidiary list here. And Katie's should be the second one. Okay. It is June 19. Whatever piece of information you want to put here, right? What do you want to put here? Okay, good. Received payment. Check number 412. Okay. Invoice. Okay. Post reference. We're still on general journal page seven. What were the terms that I gave Katie? Good. 50% COD net 5. So in this case, no discount. Okay. However, when does Katie owe me? When is her due date to pay her bill? In five days, which is going to be 24th of June. Okay. In this case, no advance payment because she didn't pay me in advance, but she did pay me at time of delivery. So therefore, what was the total amount of sales that she was billed for? What was the actual amount? 2.1905 and upon delivery we also received a payment for the 109.53. So, this time when we're doing our formula under this column where it says accounts receivable, right? The formula is identical to accounts payable except the titles are just different, right? This one's going to be your sales Okay, so you're going to equal your sales minus any advance payments, minus any returns, minus any discounts, and minus any payments. Enter. And now it's going to show you that Katie owes me $109.52, which is correct because that was the total amount on her invoice. Okay. And down here, if you have it all set up already for you guys, um, it should give you a tally total of how much Katie owes you in grand total with all the invoices combined. So in this case, Katie owes me one o nine fifty two. Okay, good. One more thing that we need to do. Update inventory. Not yet. Before updating the inventory, there's one more thing we need to do. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. So there's one more thing that we need to do. One more thing we need to do. So when we received Katie's check, what do we do with that check? In this case, good. We're going to be looking at our deposits, except this time, right. Like I've mentioned before, we're going to have to make our deposits at the end of the day. Excuse me one second. So in this case, right, since we're going to make our deposits at the end of the day, the least we can do is at least collect the check. So then when we do reach the end of the day, we deposit everything at once. So in this case, I'm only going to record that I received the check and that it's pending for a deposit. Okay, so for 109.53. 
okay? So on the left side, I'm collecting my checks, collecting my cash, and when I wait till the very end of the day, when I actually need to make my deposit, I'll put my de deposit, deposit date in there and then deposit all of the cash and the checks that I've earned that day, okay? All right. So let's see, that's it for that transaction, okay? All right. So then let's see what happened here. What did we do? What did we do here? Excellent. Yes, we did. All right. So in this case, right here, I have a previous transaction that I've recorded, right? And how did we pay? We paid with a business credit card. So in this case, that's exactly what this exact transaction is. And I'm going to copy this and bring this transaction down to my journal. Okay, and we are on the 19, okay? So, restaurant supplies, we did, we bought 4,000 cups, okay? Do we have a receipt number? No, but you know what? Let's go ahead and say this is receipt number... Let's see, zero, zero, five, nine, five, eight, no, five, nine, four, two, two. Actually, wait, hold on, that's too many numbers. Zero, zero, five, nine, four, two. There you go. Okay. So there you go. So we can change that, right? This is another new receipt for the 005942. Okay. So in this case, right, I bought 2,000 cups of my medium cups, okay, which gave me a total of $100. And then I bought my large cups for $150, okay? Giving me a total of $250, and I have $20.63 of tax. How do I distribute the tax? Mm -hmm. Multiply by each one. So in this case, right, I have one for eight dollars and twenty five cents. So one oh eight twenty five will be my large cups, I mean my medium cups. And then I have 150, let's see, 150 plus $12.38, okay, which gives you 162.38, which gives me a grand total of 270.63. So, good. All right. Okay. 
Okay, now that my journal's finished, what's next? Go through the ledger. Go through the ledger, okay? So we bought some medium coffee cups, right? Let's see. Where are we? We are in our assets. So assets. We're looking for our medium coffee cups, okay? Here it is. Medium coffee cups, all right? It is the 19. Okay. And we just bought 2,000 coffee cups, right? Which cost me 0 0.05 cents each cup, okay? Plus 8.25% tax, which yielded you $8.25. So in this case, right, I need to increase my coffee cups by 108.25, okay, giving me a grand total of One six. No, no worries. I got you. Okay. So here, right? Now, wait. Hold on a second. I just purchased 2,000 cups of coffee cups, right? However, do I don't actually have 3,000 cups in my, in my business supplies because I just sold for two days a bunch of coffees. There's no way I have 3,000 cups right now. Or right now, since I sold my first that, my first uh, two days worth of coffee cups, right? I at least sold at least 200 or, or maybe 500 coffee cups. There's no way. Why is this still reflecting that I have 1,000 in my, in, in my um, business supplies and I just purchased 2,000 more? Why is this uh, number not adjusted? Okay. In this case, yes, we will figure out what the total number of coffee cups that we sell and we will cost it, okay? If you actually took a look at your chart of accounts ahead of time, right, you're going to notice this. Under the cost of goods sold, you have cost of materials, okay? And we're going to treat this exactly like periodic inventory. We wait till the very end of the month to adjust our supplies. So right now it says that we have 3,000 coffee cups right now, but, right, but we also have to keep in mind that we are gonna sell them along the way. So someone, maybe Bob, is telling you, hey, we only have so many cups left, go out and buy it. He's not telling us how much cups we have left, he's just saying we're low on cups, go buy it. And that's all we know. We won't know until we figure it out how much it's going to cost me until the very end and how much it remains left when we reach the end of the accounting period. So in this case, the adjustments, again, it's adjustment entry, which only happens at the end of the accounting period. And cost of materials is one of them. Okay. All right, so now that we entered that in, we got to also enter in our large coffee mug, uh, coffee cups, right? We bought 2,000 cups at 7.5 cents each plus 8.25% tax, right, which was a total of $12.38, okay, which gave us 
a total of, okay, go back to your journal, which gave us a grand total of 162.38. So in this case, what's my grand total of large coffee cups? Two forty-three and fifty-seven cents. Okay, and of course, last but not least, we need to update our credit card. Okay, here we are. Our credit card. It is the nineteen, and we purchased four thousand cups. which gave us a grand total of 270.63. So, what my new grand total in my credit card right now is outstanding for $811.53. Okay. All right. Now that we did our journal, we finish our ledger. What's next? So we need to go to the vendors in Subway. Mm hmm We need to go to the vendors. Under the subsidiary. Okay. So in this case, we purchase from restaurant supplies. This time we bought 2,000 medium cups for 108.25 plus 2,000 large cups for 162.38. Okay, and we paid with our Visa credit card. Okay. In this case, it was sales receipt number 005942. Okay. General journal 7. Okay. How much was the receipt total? Two seventy sixty three. We paid it using the Visa credit card, so therefore we owe nothing. Okay. Good. And we are done with this one. Okay. Before we move on, we forgot to update our inventory. Okay. This doesn't really affect the transaction as much just because, again, 
we didn't deal with inventory. We bought uh, business supplies. So what you can do is you can go ahead and put it under here. Um, but with the beauty of Excel, you can, you know, copy this transaction and paste it down below and then make the space for it. Um, I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this transaction and I'm going to paste it actually right down below. Okay. Never mind. That did not work very well. So in this case, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to delete five things here and insert the rows there. Okay. What you could have done too is you could have just put it right down below. It wouldn't really make a huge impact once again just because it isn't uh, technically wrong. You just forgot to update your inventory, which had no effect with anything. But in this case, I like to keep it in order just so then you know why you are updating your inventory. It's because of that reason. And in this case, the, the, the journal do not change because it's still going to be on seven anyway, even if you forgot to put it in there, right? It's okay. All right, that's the beauty of having Excel is that you are able to make those edited changes so then it makes your journal look like this, okay? But again, it has to be in chronological order. So if this happened way back in the past, then you're just going to have to write a correcting um, error um, entry in there to say that you're correcting the entry that you missed on this, okay? So again, if you did miss this Katie's Coffee Corner update and you end up doing it in the 20th or the 23rd or whatever date that you end up finding that mistake, you just have to record it according that way. You can't go back and fix it like this and make everything sound, okay? Just because that's where things are gonna get messed up and things are gonna get screwed up, especially because you've already entered in your inventory. So again, you don't want to do that and have to backtrack and fix all your mistakes that way, okay? But if it's in the same day and you're in, you just forgot it like right after this and you just entered in this, you're safe, okay? Because in this case, this transaction does not affect your inventory, all right? So in this case, we need to figure out our inventory because here we end up selling 15 pounds of the regular coffee and 10 pounds of the Supreme coffee. So inventory worksheet, regular coffee, okay? We sold 15 pounds, okay? We sold 15 pounds. Now, at what cost per item? Good. So what is going to be my total cost of goods sold here? Sixteen oh four. Sixteen oh four? Twenty four fourteen. Yes, it's it's identical to the one right above it. I hope you're not on this one. Okay, so the fifteen times a dollar six oh nine should give you twenty four. Yeah, I, I messed up my number. No worries. Okay, good. So now that we have this. 2414 we need to update our inventory because in this case 225 minus 15 is going to give me 
to 10. Okay. And of course, in this case, I have $362.11 and I'm subtracting out 24 14 so I should get three three seven ninety seven so in this case right your your figure that's in the middle is constantly calculating because I told Excel to constantly recalculate my average cost every single time so I don't have to manually do it by hand okay so there you go and I can hide this okay. so I have 210 at 33797 okay. I need to also update my supreme because I end up selling 10 pounds of the Supreme. 10 pounds uh, for my Supreme. And if you remember, we're using FIFO to calculate my cost of goods sold. So in this case, FIFO, which batch of inventory am I going to take out from? Right, the 180 batch. Okay. So in this case, what is my total cost of goods sold here? If I sold 10 pounds at 1.8, $18. dollars. So in this case, right, 169.20 minus 18 should give you something with 20 cents, okay? And 94 minus 10 should give you 84. There you go. And you get 151.20 which gives you a grand total of 209 left at 379.70, okay? So again, these numbers are what you're gonna be matching with your ledger, okay? So first things first is we have Supreme, we sold at 18, and regular, we sold at 24.14. So, right, this one's going to be cost of goods sold, okay? Which I can just copy this from right above and carry it down, right? But the only difference here is your description is going to say sold to Katie's Coffee Corner, okay? In case Katie decides to return something from us, whether it's pounds of coffee or whether it is um, coffee mugs, we have a track record because of invoice number 101, right? And you could throw that in there as well, right? You could say sold to Katie's Coffee through invoice 101. So in this case, we sold 2414 for the regular coffee and we sold 18 for the Supreme Coffee. Okay. Okay. Now that we finished our journal. Right? We need to plug it into our ledger. Okay? So this is a cost of goods sold. So cost of goods sold. This time instead of using our coffee, we sold. Okay? Sold. 15 pounds. If you wanted to say to Katie, you can. You could put the invoice number if you want to, but I'm fine with just sold 15 pounds. Okay. We're still on the seventh journal, and we sold for 24.14. 
which gives us our new account balance to be Sixty four twenty eight. Good. See else what's next. We sold ten pounds. Okay. For a total of eighteen dollars. So that should give me a total balance of Excuse me. Correct. Seventy-three dollars and eighty cents. Okay. We need to update our inventory. Right, because we sold fifteen pounds for twenty-four dollars and fourteen cents. So that should give me 33797, which 100% matches my inventory worksheet, right? I know that I got 37797, right? But that means we calculated everything right. Okay. I need to also update my Supreme Coffee because... I end up selling 10 pounds of coffee, okay, which, get, which reduced me by $18, which gives me $379.70, and is that correct and matches on your inventory worksheet? In this case, it does. We do have $379.70 worth of Supreme Coffee left. Okay. All right. So that's also one of the things that you could figure out if you on the next one and your numbers are mumble jumbo and not matching. That will be one of the reasons is because we forgot to update our ledger. Okay. So that means now that we already finished this one, right, let's see what happened next. Right? We need to pay Silver State Electrical using check. Okay? So we're going to pay using a check. Pay to Silver State Electrical. And we're going to be on page 8 of the journal. Okay? We need to pay Silver State Electrical. We're going to pay Silver State Electrical. How are we going to record this transaction? Accounts payable. Accounts payable because we owe money, right, to Silver State Electrical. And we're paying it now, right? And how are we paying them? We're going to be cutting them a check. Now, how much do we know? How do I know how much I owe and how much I'm going to pay them? Three, three, five, one, 
Where did you find that? Okay, perfect. Subsidiary ledger. Okay. Your subsidiary ledger, you look up who this was Silver State Electrical. Okay, so Silver State Electrical, here they are. You received the bill on the 15. You recorded it. It was bill invoice number 3351. It told us that it was going to do be due in four days, which is going to be on the 19th, which is today. And how much we owe them? We owe them 1070. So in this case, I owe them 1070. So that's the amount that I'm gonna be writing out to them because that is what I owe. I owe 1070. Okay. Now how am I going to pay Silver State Electrical? With a check. With a check. So check register. It is June 19. We're paying 1070 to Silver State Electrical. Silver State Electrical, right? Check number 1519. So let's wrap up my description. What am I going to say? Payment to Silver State Electrical. Good. Silver State Electrical Okay You want to refer to the invoice and the check number you used Excellent Now that my journal's done, what is next? What's next? Not the subsidiary. Well, I mean, you okay? Okay, we can do the subsidiary first. Okay. Since we're already here at Silver State Electrical, right? Today is the nineteen. Okay. What are you gonna put in the notes? Right, we're on a new page. Right, we're referring to this invoice. And I made a payment of 1070. So that should give you a negative 1070 here, which should give you your account balance for Silver State Electrical to equal to zero. 
you don't owe them anything. Right? What else do I need to do? Yes, we need to see how much money we owe and compare to how much money that we spent. Right? So here we are, accounts payable. Right? It is the 19. What do you want to say here? Okay, invoice number 3351. And the check number? Check number 1519. Okay. So in this case, how much do I owe now? What's my account balance in my accounts payable account? $12,592.65. Good. We're finally decreasing our liabilities. We went from 15,000, now we're down to 12,000. So good. However, let's check out our checking account. We just spent a thousand dollars and seventy, a thousand seventy dollars, a thousand and seventy dollars. All right, so we spend 1070. So in this case, how much money do we have left in our bank account? $458.16. Yep. So we are we're paying off our debt. But at the same time, we're draining our cash. We need to make some more sales for us to get back into the positives because like, we're very, very, very close to the negatives, right? All right. Good. And that should be it. Okay. So I'm going to stop here, okay? And then we will uh, continue on with the rest of the stuff, okay? So we're going to pause here.